Welcome. It's the single African market and it's the continent's most reliable media platform regarding the journey of the continent of Africa to integrate its market. And this week we are revisiting that important survey that was done by the uh, Ghana Statistical Service uh, with support from the UNDP as well as the World Bank that revealed that about 82% of uh, businesses are expectant of the positive impact of the AFCFTA. It also revealed that the number of uh, businesses that are actually now aware of the AFCFTA in Ghana have doubled from 26, or more than double uh, actually, from 26% to 53% uh, there. But we are going to deal with a certain component of those figures that have been churned out by the Ghana Statistical Service because even though averagely, 82% of those companies are hopeful or expectant of the impact. Just about 75% thereabout are small and medium enterprises. Now, about 90% of those businesses are large corporations. We want to look at the gap there. Why is it so? Why is it that the SMEs are relatively, those who are expectant of the positive impact of the uh, AFCFTA uh, post-COVID uh, recovery, uh, is relatively smaller than the large corporations. So this week we are going to sit with the uh, UNDP. They supported that survey to be conducted. They also support in this platform to create a lot more awareness and we will find out what they think that implementers of the AFCFTA should be able to make use of that uh, data that is out there. In the meantime, let's go listen to highlight of that particular uh, information that was put out by the Ghana Statistical Service from the government statistician uh, of the Republic of Ghana himself. A COVID-19 business tracker survey conducted on some 4,800 local businesses in Ghana by the Ghana Statistical Service with support from the United Nations Development Program, UNDP and the World Bank has shown an increased awareness about the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, with majority of them banking on the single continental market to drive the rapid transformation of their ventures. According to the report, after the third wave survey that was conducted at the end of 2021, when the AFCFTA had taken off, the level of awareness about the single continental market more than doubled to about 53%, but awareness among large corporations were higher than those of SMEs. We had about a quarter, specifically 26% of them, that were aware during the second wave, that was in September 2020, and a year on this figure had risen to about 53%. So we saw a doubling, uh, more, more than a doubling of the figure that we had um, a year earlier on. And this also manifested itself around the medium-sized firms more predominantly than the um, micro and small size firms. It also indicated that optimism about the potential of the agreement to transform local businesses was very high, with 82% of them very upbeat about the single market, counting on the expected removal of trade barriers and customs harmonization. However, just like the awareness, business expectations for the AFCFTA among large corporations were far higher than those of SMEs. You realize that the optimism is highest among the very large firms. And instead of having 82% for all firms um, in the country, among the large size firms, you have over 90% of them that are pretty optimistic that the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will transform um, their business. We had this micro and small firms indicating percentages between 70 and 80 percent giving us the overall average of 82 percent now good news coming from the government statistician there uh regarding the numbers uh that have been put out out of that survey about 82 percent an average of 82 percent of ghanaian businesses are expectant of the positive impact of the efc fta uh, 53 percent of Ghanaian businesses now aware of the EFCFTA, but leaders on the continent, the implementers of the EFCFTA, pundits and watchers of the integration of African economy are uh, of the belief that the future of the continent of Africa belongs to small and medium enterprises. Because here in Ghana, SMEs contribute about 70 percent 
to our gross domestic product. That's the GDP. So the hope is that more SMEs get to know about the EFC, FDA, and how it can impact on them a lot more even than the large corporations. But the survey is indicating large corporations are the ones who are leading the numbers. Now, let's go and listen to the pundits and see why this is something that ought to be looked at and how can we bridge the gap so that almost everybody gets to know about it. Almost all businesses are fully expectant of the positive impacts. Let's listen. We particularly want to encourage SMEs because they are really the backbone of the economy, uh, the economies in African countries. How do we really make awareness about the ECFTA for all our categories, the large corporates and the cross-border women traders, the young entrepreneurs and the big chambers of commerce? What does ECFTA mean to our people of Africa? How does it have an impact on the daily life of creating more jobs, of having these women on the cross-border know their rights to increase our trade? But to increase our trade, not with a container coming from Dubai or China, to increase our trade with made in Africa products that is really value added, packaged, designed, competitive, standard. Small medium enterprises, young entrepreneurs are at the heart of what we are trying to achieve. Trade agreements are not about the past. Trade agreements are about capturing the future. That's why young entrepreneurs have to be at the heart of what we are doing. I'm sure that from those statements in that particular piece that you uh, had there, you now understand why we on the single African market place a lot of focus in highlighting uh, the contribution of uh, entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises, women entrepreneurs, and all of that on this platform because the entire continent believes that the future of Africa's economy is in the hands of uh, the small and medium enterprises. Now, here in Ghana, small and medium enterprises contribute about 70% to this country's gross domestic product. That's the GDP. Now, this cuts across almost uh, most countries on the continent of Africa. Most uh, nations on this continent's GDP are driven by the small and medium enterprises. That's why we place a lot of focus on them. So now that Ghana's uh, statistical service survey is indicating that uh, the large corporations uh, are now much more hopeful of the impact of the EFC, EFTA. Also, the large corporations are much more aware of the AFC, FTA, than the small and medium enterprises. How do we bridge this gap? How do we carry along the small and medium enterprises along this vision of the AFC, FTA? Aside the noise that some of us uh, come on this platform to make, highlighting them here and there, how do we close the gap? And what should implementers of the AFC, FTA make of the uh, outcome of the survey that's been put out there by the Ghana Statistical Service. I sat down with UNDP's country representative in Ghana, Dr. Angela Lusigi. This uh, COVID-19 business tracker actually came about at the beginning of COVID when we realized that small and medium-sized enterprises are the backbone of Ghana's economy. So when COVID struck, we wanted to find out what was happening with these small businesses um, and what are the policies that needed to be in place to help them recover. So we started um, in 2020, and this is our third wave. So we've been tracking the same businesses over time because we're very interested in finding out how we can build the resilience of these small and medium enterprises, which are the backbone of Ghana's economy and provide over 70% of Ghana's uh, GDP how do we ensure that they build back forward? Okay, so you had uh, focus on particular businesses mm -hmm. uh, and what category of businesses were they? We looked at a, a range of businesses and we categorized them according to size, but we we're also very careful to take a representative sample from around the country. And one of the things that was very important about these businesses was to find out what are the specific policies that were in place that were helping them to recover and what did they want 
to be assisted with going forward. We also wanted to find out from them what were the expectations of the future? What did they see as some of the opportunities ahead? And that really motivated us to track over 4,800 businesses over, over two years, just to be able to find out and inform policymakers how best to support them. Yeah, we, we recognize that you've been very particular about the AFCFT as well, trying to see uh, how it would improve the development on the continent, and particularly here in Ghana. Uh, what, what was the idea behind including the AFCFTA in this survey, and what did you seek to achieve? Well, we asked these small businesses about some of the opportunities that they saw going forward. So we wanted to know, because as the Africa continental free trade area is an opportunity through the single market to drive Ghana's structural transformation and create jobs, we thought we needed to find out from these enterprises whether they knew about the opportunities that might uh, come about from the Africa continental free trade area. And if they knew about it, what were the expectations on how it would affect their businesses? And we found out very early on at the beginning, not very many um, enterprises knew about the AFCFTA. But in the third way, we've actually seen an increase. But more than that, we really looked at the expectations across the board. They all felt that this was an opportunity that would transform their businesses going forward. So there's definitely an opportunity for us here to unpack what these proposed benefits could be for, for some of these businesses. Now, why is it important that the SMEs, uh, you, you identify the SMEs to be the, the, the lowest category with that high expectation of the AFC, EFT? Of what significance is this information? What can be drawn out of it? And what should be done to bring the SMEs on board? Because we've heard quite often that uh, the small and medium enterprises are the backbone of the African economy, the future of the African economy. And so this whole AFC, EFT is running around the, the, the SMEs. Mm -hmm. Of what significance uh, do you think that the data you got and the fact that least of them, if you compare them to the conglomerate and the big corporations, least of them are expectant of the FCFTS impact. Well, actually, you know, as a development organization, we always want to make sure that we leave no one behind. So for us, it was very important to look across the spectrum and see how to enable the benefits of the Africa continental free trade area to reach everyone. So for us, this information is critical because Having more information is only one starting point. Yeah. Having the right information and making sure that the SMEs are ready to take advantage of these opportunities is something that we're very interested in, which is part of what is informing our approach to looking at what is the support system that we need for SMEs to be able to make them ready to, to access the, the ACFTA. So this information is very useful for policymakers to let them know that number one, you have to get the information out there. You have to get the right information out there that is relevant to small, micro and medium enterprises. And then you also have to be able to let them um, and enable them to, to access the opportunities. And one of the ways that we see is through uh, digital transformation. We know that a lot of the enterprises are now beginning to use digital infrastructure. They're beginning to use mobile payments and so on. But very few are able to access the internet and, and e-trade, e-commerce, for instance. So these are opportunities for us to, to really look at how we can enable SMEs to be able to access some of these um, infrastructures so that they can be ready to take advantage of the AFCF. We know that the UNDP has been doing quite, quite a lot when it comes to uh, supporting some of these SMEs, some of these young uh, entrepreneurs, young innovators here and there. What are some of the, the things that you can highlight that can be done to prep up these young entrepreneurs, young innovators ahead of the AFC, EFTs, uh, you know, practical implementation to let them stay competitive and all of that? The first thing is around digital tools and strategic communications. And we've worked with a group of young innovators and also going down to the district level to see how we can be able to have more access to these tools. Because we believe that in order being able to access information and also being able to reach your customers, um, as well as uh, information from people who are providing services is very, very important. But we also believe that there needs to be an integrated support system for SMEs. And we have a, a, a prototype that looks at a range of services and support that these enterprises need. 
Access to information is one thing, but also access to financing, access to business know-how, how to grow your business, access to export uh, information, because if we're talking about AFC, FTA, you need to know what the opportunities are out there in order to export. And then also to be able to think global, to look beyond Ghana, and to become global entrepreneurs. Yeah, and on our platform, we've we've highlighted some of the folks that you've have, you've supported. Uh, we we've had a young uh, man who was uh, adding value to Tiger Nut, for instance. Somebody who is engaged in snail farming, for instance. Uh, the young lady uh, using soldier black soldier fly and all of that to convert waste. What are some of the interventions that you? practically are offering to these young entrepreneurs how can young entrepreneurs and innovators take advantage of some of the some of the interventions that you are rolling out well we are now looking at having a digital gateway because we understand there's a lot of people who are providing different support um, systems for entrepreneurs but there is a gap because the young entrepreneurs are not able to find out this information and they are also not able to find out from the young entrepreneurs what is needed to be able to target their services. So we're really looking at having a digital gateway that we will connect young people to opportunities that are available, whether it's financing, whether it's tools, and whether it's export information, because they can connect with other young people across the continent and even across Ghana to be able to aggregate. How do you think implementers of the AFC FTA can take advantage or this particular outcome of the survey that you have. And uh, if you can tie in with going into the future, are we to expect a fourth wave? Are we to expect a fifth wave? And uh, what are your expectations getting, getting into those uh, waves in the future? Well, the implementation of the AFCFTA in Ghana is coordinated by the, the National Coordination, Coordination Office. Office. And you need data. You yeah. need data, you need baselines, you need to be able to see where you're starting from so you can be able to inform where you're going. So we can see that the knowledge about ACFTA is growing, but we are not at 100% yet. So that is something that should definitely be a focus for um, our partners there. But also making sure that they have access to the right information at the right time and being able also to connect them to other export uh, markets and the information about export markets. So we really see this as a baseline. We also see it as a guide because people are saying that they are hopeful about the future. They are hopeful about it transforming uh, their businesses, but they need to know how. Yeah. And are we able to tell from the data uh, the, whether the right information is being disseminated? This particular survey right. just says, asks them whether they know all okay. this. Um, of course, that again is something that, you know, the National Coordination Office can look at to make sure that we're providing the right information, which is why the Digital Gateway mm -hmm. is a very good platform and, and prototype where we can be able to make sure that entrepreneurs have access to the right information and most up-to-date information about the evolving um, rollout of the AFCFT. We're very grateful for our partnership with the Ghana Statistical Services and the World Bank and also the funding that came from the, from the government of Germany because we are shining a spotlight and listening to entrepreneurs to find out exactly what kind of support that they need to be able to, to go forward. So we definitely see ourselves going forward and continuing with this data gathering exercise because we need to be able to inform policies that will actually change lives. That's Dr. Angela Lusigi, uh, the UNDP representative here in Ghana, and the UNDP has been extremely supportive of the agenda of the continent of Africa to integrate its market, supporting at all forms, supporting the small and medium enterprises themselves, supporting the awareness creation platforms like the Single African Market Program, also supported the survey that was done or put out by the Ghana Statistical Service. So we have heard it all. It's important that we are able to bring along this whole journey, the small and medium enterprises, if we all believe in the fact that they drive Ghana's economy, they drive Africa's economy. And we are going to ensure that on this platform, we continue to uh, drum home this message that the continent's economy is in the hands of the small and medium enterprises and the AFC FTA is here for them as well as all businesses on the continent of Africa. Now this week we are going to highlight 
about four or five small and medium enterprises, young people who are doing great stuff uh, in their innovations, in their entrepreneurship drive and all of that that we have been able to profile since we got into this year 2022. Visual artists I actually do um, traditional arts and I do um, digital arts as well. Whilst in the Academy, I was introduced to um, African math and sculpture pieces. Back in 2010, I was experimenting with Coral Draw and Photoshop and all that. In 2017, I started doing traditional arts. So as time went on, I developed my artistic skill and kind of focused more on um, the African math influence. So that became like a uh, my stylistic representations. I actually got an email from one of these um, NFT marketplaces and, and they were interested in uh, me putting up my digital artwork on their platform to sell. So that's when I started selling my digital artworks as NFT. But um, way before then I was doing digital art. It's, it's just something that I love to do and I've always been doing it. So the NFTs just served as an avenue to sell my digital art. I have plans to do a lot of collaboration with other um, digital NFT artists as well. With Aftab, it would make certain things easy. Like for instance, the, when we, we held the cyber bat, a part of it was held, held as a, a physical exhibition in Senegal. So it would be very easy to move, travel to Senegal with some of my physical pieces and it would be easy to interact with Senegal, easy, easy to move in and out and it would be easy to um, do other physical exhibitions in other parts of Africa as well, which would probably be harder if not for um, AFTERS initiatives. So I think that um, with AFTERS initiatives, it's going to help me easily access these people from these African and um, West African countries. And that's what, like one of the biggest things, because if it's not easy to get access to them, it will be hard to share this knowledge that I have with them. I'm a Chinese translator. I developed interest by making all these beautiful artifacts that you see around me here, just to promote our sanitation and also keep our environment clean and also make beautiful product out of nature and also to create jobs for our youth. I have a very nice seashells, flower vase. You can put it on your dining table or anywhere you prefer. I have a very nice um, wall hanging um, holders made up of old newspapers. And this one too is another wall decor made up of glue sticks and cardboard. This sticks you see here, or the strips you see here, is not sticks. It's made up of old newspapers and then cardboard. I call this mirror sunrise. It's made up of cardboard. And see this nice flower vase. It's not sticks. Old newspapers. This one you can decide to put flowers inside or you leave it like that on your dining table or your center table. The whole thing you see there is made up of cardboard, but this one you see here that makes the cardboard look beautiful is made up of old jeans. It's fabric. When the seamstress, they sew our dresses and they throw the pieces away, I'll just go there, pick them, and then sort them out and then do something beautiful out of it. So this flowers you see is not any other flower, but it's a fabric that uh, we've used. And the sticks you see in there is no wood, old newspapers. There's another nice wall clock that you find there with uh, bottle covers, Belacqua, with straw. The name is the Yasantua Pierce. And then if you come here to this another wall decor, very beautiful with broken mirrors and cardboard that we used to produce that. And then jeans, old jeans with cardboard wall decor. This is a car tie sales counter. So old car ties, old newspapers, cardboard inside so that you can place your items in a very unique form. On top of the car tie counter, you can see nice vases with their flowers. This vase you see here is made up of cardboard with foam sheets. This is jeans, your jeans. This one to plastic bottles. Now that we have after in Africa, which we can sell our products in the other African countries without paying duties, I want to sell my products 
in the other African countries. We came together and decided to work solely on our ambition, that's game development. We started with our first project, a side scroller adventure game called Osa, The Ghost Awakening. But due to some one or two circumstances, we put it on hold and focus on our game that we launched recently, that's Kauri's The Adventure. Kauri's Adventure was born out of the frustration we're going through during doing our, our Osa The Ghost Awakening game. Upon everything that goes on as an African, you will still have the chance to fight against it and achieve what you want to achieve with determination. So that's where we started this whole story about a young guy in a fictional setting called Jita. And he was called by the gods to succeed a throne. And he decided not to succeed the throne because he wants his freedom. Just like how we, the creatives in Ghana and in other parts of Africa want our freedom to create and do what we love without any restrictions and without any hindrance. Jita, you've been chosen to succeed the truth. Wow, that's cool. Uh, I'm not interested. How dare you make more of the great ones? And we try doing this through our music. The music we do in the game, we make sure that we take the things that outsiders think ill or negative about Africa polish it, makes it appealing to the youth to appreciate their culture and appreciate what Africa has to God to do with the world. The uniqueness of the, some of the elements in it, the sound, the characters in it, and the story behind it. Not just from Africa, but the quality stuff coming from Africa. I have to congratulate Africans for bringing AFTA to seamlessly integrate all Africans in our trade platform and how we do business. It is time for us to work together, not just by word of mouth, but in action. And there are payment system they introduced called PAPS. It's kind of <laughs> interesting and mind blowing, whereby you just send money, you don't need to even add any extra. What you send is what the person gets. Well done, uh, Africans, for bringing AFTA. I think it's AFTA. It will help us to move easily, uh, collaborate with other African creatives. After has come to stay, and we are very grateful for it. What is going on here? How dare you make mockery of the great ones? You will be punished for your disobedience. <laughs> Aside being nurse, I needed to do something for myself and then for the future. Now I have eight solid products. Yes, eight. The oat mix, I added on to um, a quick baby, Oblayo, and then later somewhere like, okay, then do something other. The usual things we see on the street, house of cocoa. I said, okay, fine, let's do house of cocoa. And then we managed to process our house of cocoa into these bottles. This house of cocoa is already sieved and it takes just two minutes to prepare. So no need to waste time at all. Then we all know house of cocoa, we eat it with either akara or kose. So we added on Kose, Akara, and then Almighty Puff Puff. And the good news is we are FDA approved within a year. Currently, we are producing about 500 pieces of each of the products to serve the Ghanaian community. But we have plans of scaling up and then taking it out of Ghana to the neighboring African countries. We want the brand Samuela to be a household name. When you mention Samuela in Ghana, in Togo, in wherever, they know that it's a, it's a brand for everything about breakfast, they have it. So we source all our raw materials from the Ghanaian market, that is wheat, beans, rice, um, flour, corn, everything we use, millet, we source all from the Ghanaian market. So this is the kind of packaging that can fit in any more in any country, like the South Africa, in Egypt. And we believe that our products can also compete with other products on the international market. So now that AFTA is here, which is going to remove all forms of barriers, be it tariff barriers or non-tariff barriers, it's going to help us scale up and then we produce more and then take it to the neighboring African countries. This in turn will help create employment for all those in the value chain. So you can imagine the farmers, their families, the porters, the 
retailers and then the workers that we have is going to help a whole lot of people to get employment for themselves. And this is our small way of also helping to create awareness uh, among the small and medium enterprises, among large corporations, because on this program, we'll also be highlighting some of the works that have been done by the large corporations that have been engaged by the National AFCFTA Coordination Offices and all of that. So we are hoping that all of you out there are getting encouraged by uh, some of these entrepreneurs and what they are doing and begin to take control of your own economy, as well as the economy of this country, uh, Ghana, and the economy of Africa at large. In the coming weeks, we will be hearing a lot of interventions that have been put together uh, for some of these uh, young enterprises, young enterprises, small and medium enterprises here and there uh, from the institutions that are mandated to do so. Coming up next, the weather report for all African cities, the fly schedules from the commercial capital uh, of Africa to the rest of African cities, uh, the forex rate for the African market and the AFCFT status for party states. <music> or a large corporation or you don't belong to any of that so long as you're a citizen of the continent of Africa you may buy from the market uh, you may even sell to the market or none of that you may offer your service one day whether as a teacher as a journalist as a doctor you may want to offer your service in another African country or somebody from another African country may want to offer their service in your country it is important that you get to understand this AFCFTA, that's the vision and the new paradigm on the continent of Africa, or be left out. And you need to understand it so that you are impacted by it positively. That's why we always encourage you to tag along this platform, listen to whatever is going on that's being communicated uh, to you, and understand the AFCFTA, understand the paradigm, and be impacted by it positively. Thank you for watching the program and I hope to see you same time next week.